now we go to our guest, who I appreciate holding, Michael Allison. And, and, and just to reintroduce him to you, this is the clip in the last week and a half that's gone viral all together, millions of views on YouTube with the different versions uh, of the local newscast uh, that are out there. And there were quite a few Michael Allisons in his town up in Illinois. Uh, and so i just given up on trying to get him. And then he ended up contacting, getting all to us through Mike Hansen. Uh, one of my old cameramen. So uh, glad that uh, Michael Allison is here with us. And I wasn't surprised to learn that he's a listener and has been contacting us since before this even broke and became a big national story. Uh, you, you remember he's, he's facing life in prison for videotaping and audio taping police in public places. Uh, and, and, and the police have been charging people in those incidents, the news shows, where you're 200 yards away, the cops ride somebody over with a horse for no reason or knock a woman off a bike, they go ahead and come over, beat you up, arrest you, charge you for taping them. They videotape you in public. How does a cop have a microphone on his, on his tie or a camera in his car and audio uh, hooked onto his uniform? Because there's no perception of privacy in public. It's not wiretapping. But they run this hoax in 12 states and put people behind bars who don't know how to defend themselves or get a good lawyer. Now, in other cases, it's, it's thrown out when people fight it. And a, a First Circuit Court of Appeals uh, just ruled that, of course, it's First Amendment. But the police in 12 states don't care. They are arresting and also beating people who tape them in public. They'll come in your yard and arrest you now. This is a true sign of tyranny. Uh, and, and some people are serving, I've looked it up, five-year sentences, 12-year sentences for videotaping police, uh, in some cases in their own homes when police come. Uh, now they're calling it wiretapping. Uh, very frightening that police would, would send us away like we weren't humans and, and, and violate our rights and, and then laugh about it. I mean, very, I mean, that, that even shocks me that they become that criminal in 12 states and that the state governments are saying, yes, do it. We're going to throw the book at you along with the counties. Uh, but, but I've heard of no one facing life in prison and, and, and Michael Allison faces life in prison. And he's going to give us the, some of the rest of the story today. Uh, he's been investigating what he believes is corruption and inside deals, and, and, and he, he's been in court with them and requested a court reporter. They won't do that, so he tries to record himself publicly in court that ha or, or on the street. That's where all these charges are stemming from. Uh, so Michael Allison joins us uh, from Illinois. Michael, tell us where you're based and uh, basically what's happened to you and where all this is going. First of all, it's good to be here. I'm, I'm glad you you uh, had me on, and uh, uh, I'm a, a long-term resident of Bridgeport, Illinois, and uh, basically the whole situation started in Bridgeport, uh, basically over uh, a city ordinance and uh, that violates my rights to uh, uh, fix up and restore uh, classic cars as a form of hobby and, and a public interest. I mean, I, so it's I'm more sure. of the banning lemonade stands and gardening, more of just uh, Rob Dew and his housing division. The, 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 the uh, office building has trash cans all out front, but he's not even allowed to, to, to have the trash cans on the side of his house. So he went to show the hypocritical nature and they don't care. So just, 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 just more control freaks. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, a situation that deprives the citizens of their freedom and rights and liberties. And, uh, so I, I saw it as an injustice and a violation of my rights, and I proceeded to uh, uh, sue them in federal court after they had taken action, illegal action, against me. And uh, the the case was pending from uh, 2005 until 2008, and uh, it survived the motion to dismiss. The case was valid. Uh, it had merit. And... Uh, uh, when, when we went through uh, de depositions that took place in 2007, I had uh, discovered uh, a, a little bit of information by asking a few questions and getting the answers, which led me to uh, request uh, uh, documents from the state of Illinois Vehicle Services Department in Springfield, Illinois. And by getting those documents, I was able to uh, ascertain that they were illegally and fraudulently converting titles to these uh, vehicles that were illegally being seized and, and basically stolen off of private property. And because they were, were stolen and, and, and illegally seized the way they were, um, they didn't have a, a clear title that was actually signed over legally by the, the legal title holder. 
So they had to come up with a scheme to somehow get a, a title to these stolen cars. Okay, so it's the classic thing. We've seen this. I don't know about your particulars, but I've seen it even in the Washington Times and Washington Post where police, it turned out, were running their own wreckers in uniform and even hauling cars off McDonald's parking lots and then chopping them themselves or charging fees. I know that's hard to believe. You can look up the mainstream news. It was like five years ago that that happened. So, so you're alleging and you're saying you had a, a, a court case, a lawsuit, dealing with this with your cars being hauled off and folks connected to government profiting from it. Uh, uh, but regardless of the, uh, 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 of the backside, now we know uh, how this uh, uh, how this confrontation began. Now the system wanted to come after you. And where we do know they are guilty is they've now charged you with counts that add up to life in prison or publicly audio and videotaping them and telling them you were in public places. And that there is official oppression. It's false charges. Uh, because a bunch of them are involved, uh, Mr. Allison. It is racketeering. And, and so specifically, tell us about the wiretapping charges and how that came to be and where are the case is going. I mean, are you going to disappear into the Illinois prisons at taxpayer expense because you, you dare audio and videotape uh, our owners? No, I don't, I don't believe that I'll ever be convicted. Uh, the, the whole case that they have put against me is bogus. And uh, e even if I would... would uh, it's not likely, but even if I was to be convicted in the uh, lower courts, um, I would have a very solid c uh, case in uh, an appellate court. And uh, But the amazing thing is I've seen the arrogant prosecutor on the news. He looks very pleased with himself, but won't talk to reporters, but is smiling and smirking like a cat that just got caught eating a canary. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I get a different perception. I, I think that... Uh, that, that face may be just to cover up the fact that they, he knows that he's in deep trouble. I, I think that as soon as they uh, realized that I was going to fight back and not just cower in a corner and, and plead guilty to some lesser charge, uh, they, they knew that they had a, a situation on their hands and they was going to have to deal with it. Well, Michael Allison is one of those evil things they call a 1776er, an American, uh, a quiet, hardworking man who was pushed too far and abused and had his cars taken from him. So he began to stand up for himself six years ago. And now this story leads us to him facing life in prison for simply trying to get a record of his own court cases and to interview on the street uh, the people that were persecuting him. And now in the court of public opinion, they've been convicted by the mere fact that they would charge this man with illegal wiretapping and try to put him in prison for life. I mean, they are definitely guilty of being jackbooted, out of control, un-American thugs. There, th there is no doubt about that. When they charged you with this, they showed just how out of control they are. Yeah, I, I believe that they, uh, whenever this came up, uh, the, the way that it all take, uh, took place and, and, and went down, it was it just smacks of a clear case of uh, retaliation. Uh, they did it with intent to to try to to uh, shut me up and and bring me down, uh, so that I couldn't expose their little extortion scheme that they have been running for years. Well, that needs to be looked into by the state police and others. I don't know the particulars, and I mean, we've talked about some of the backstory, but specifically, uh, tell us about the charges, where it's going. Um, uh, I've recently had a, a court hearing uh, on uh, August 18th, and uh, the uh, assistant attorney general came down from Chicago, Illinois, to uh, basically defend the constitutionality of this illegal uh, uh, eavesdropping statute. Yeah, again, this isn't book. just, to stop right there, this isn't just some rogue county or city. The state, and that's why it's happening in 12 states, they are pushing this. This shows this is organized. This isn't some boss hog doing it. This is boss hog statewide. Please continue. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it started out as a boss hog situation where uh, these, these little towns in these little counties uh, in, in Lawrence County and Crawford County, Illinois, are, are about as corrupt as you can get. And the, the, the difference between Chicago and, and small-town Illinois is that uh, in Chicago, there's a lot of corruption. But um, there's a, a lot of people that are, are uh, charged with the duty of, of discovering and prosecuting that corruption. 
and uh, in downstate Illinois, in these little small corrupt towns, uh, there, there is no oversight. Uh, you're you're just at the mercy of of these people, and there is no help. Well, we're here to help, Michael, and we appreciate your courage standing up to him. Uh, I want to come back and get back to the state. State prosecutors down there saying, we want to put this American in prison for life.